Hey guys, Zalonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel. In this video today, we are looking at the 4231, and I'm delivering you the best meta custom tactics and player instructions for the 4231. And I'm going to go through my whole setup from ultra defensive all the way to ultra attacking and explain in depth and show you exactly how to set up for each part of the game, how you can change the tactic in game based on different situations. We're going to go through the tactics. I'm going to go for the player instructions and then I'm going to show you lots of gameplay clips at the end of the video so you can actually see how the formation plays in game, how you're supposed to build up with it, how you defend with it. I've played over 100 games um, with this tactic now on this account and my Road to Glory account. Barely lost a game on both, working amazing even with a cheap team. So let's get into the actual tactic. So you have the balance here, that's just for the chemistry. You can see there I've just got it set up there in a 4 3 3. In game, I switched straight away to my defensive tactic. Now, this is something very different that I've been doing on FIFA 23, and honestly, it's just broken in my opinion how strong it is. I start in press after possession loss. Anyone who has been watching my tactics videos for a long time will know that I've never really recommended this. I pretty much always recommend going to press after possession loss for a more attacking tactic to get back into the game if you're losing. But I now recommend it starting in press after possession loss. Even on my cheap road to glory team, this still works really well. Right now, press after possession loss is about as strong as it has ever been on FIFA. And one of the reasons it's so strong is it's probably the least punishing you ever have had it in terms of if you dive in. Because on this game where pace isn't OP and left stick dribbling is really bad, pressing someone really aggressively is a very good way to get the ball because it is so hard to play out of the press. Honestly, it's a bit scary how strong this is right now. I do expect a nerf from EA in the first patch or two. And obviously, when we get patches, we'll be updating the tactics, update, giving you guys videos, letting you know how I would be playing on the new patches. But for now, I 100% recommend this. Weekend League coming up, this tactic is going to be RP, and people are going to get really frustrated playing against you, which is what you want. So, like I say, normally I would start in balanced. And that was what I recommended at the start of the year. But I've probably played over 200, 250 games now um, since the game came out. Over 100 using this specific tactic. Tweaked it little bits and stuff, but this just works so well. Crossing and through balls out wide seem pretty good this year. So we've upped the width a little bit compared to the start of the year. And the depth, I normally go 40, 45. But with pace not being that OP, um, slower defenders being a lot more viable. You're not getting done by pacing behind as much. I've upped the depth a little bit from what I started this year. Um, it just helps the press after possession loss. If you think you are bad at right stick switch and have a really bad team or just a bit scared about playing press after possession loss, you can adapt this tactic and go to balanced. Um, and from there, lower the depth a bit. You could go press on heavy touch, but I really would recommend the press after possession loss. Now, the offensive, I'm kind of back and forth a little bit here. The build-up play is always balanced for me. It's the chance creation though, direct passing or balance. If you were using big target men, then I would be going direct passing. I do use CR7, but I find balance still works well on him. You'll see in the offensive um, formation, the like more aggressive one, I do switch direct passing. You can use either of these. This one is just a little bit more about getting straight to the player. If you want to be a little bit more ticky tack, a little bit more build up, I would go balance. If you want to be a bit more aggressive in your opponent's face, going straight for goal. I would go direct. In my tactics videos, I never like to say, just plug and play this and do exactly this and don't change anything. I like to give you guys options. I like to tell you different ways you can tweak it towards your team, towards your play style. I wanna help, I'm not just here to give you guys something OP that you don't understand. I'm, I'm always trying to research the best things that I think are gonna be the most OP, gonna be the most meta and share it with you guys. I wanna help you guys get better at the game. But I think a key part of you guys getting better at the game is to understand it more. Because as you start to understand it more, you can start to figure things out for you, your own gameplay and style. And I think that's important in becoming a better FIFA player. So players in box, seven. I normally don't go this high, but with crossing being really strong and it being quite hard to break people down, I want more options in the box. But the other thing is you are not that scared about counter attacks because pace just isn't good. So with pace not being good, you can be a bit more aggressive going forward. And I don't think many people will do that. Corners I actually have on three this year. I normally used to go one, but this year, if you have it on one, you basically can't do anything on a corner, so I need to have it a bit higher. Three kicks, I don't even think it matters too much. Now for the actual formation, the way we set it up, 
Keeper, obviously just pick a good keeper who gives chemistry. Centre backs, you do want decent pace. Check out my recent videos where I did a defender tier list. My defend defender tier list video ranks the top 50 centre backs and full backs in the game in my opinion. Um, Van Dijk, S tier for me, just to give you a spoiler for the video. But check out that video and in that video I talk about all the best um, defenders. The main things I want in defenders though, to be short and sweet, big bodies. I think body type matters this year this year a lot more strong good defending stats i want decent pace but i don't think it's essential this year for the fullbacks strong physical fullbacks is a benefit good on the ball so cancello is amazing for that um for my midfield one of these needs to be a good ball winner Vieira is the king this year it's the best Vieira has been on fifa 20 uh, fifa since fifa 19 in my opinion big body types big physical players with high defensive stats you want one of those in this team Previously on the last few FIFAs, I've wanted midfielders who could attack as well. I do want one midfielder to attack who could be a bit more of a playmaker in the two CDMs. But for one of the CDMs, I want one of them to be a big physical guy who's going to bully the opposition, sweep up attacks. And he can still pass, but Vieira is the perfect one for this. In cheap teams, you can use Frank Kessie, Tenali, even Fred's decent. He's not that big, but he's got the good defensive physical stats. Players like that are going to be really good in that position. For the other CDM... I've got Zidane in my team. Like I say, this is my pay-to-win team. Not everyone can afford these teams. I'm well aware of that. In my road to glory, I've got Pedri. Not as good as Zidane, obviously, but still very good and does this role perfectly. A playmaker who can shoot, who's going to be able to play people in. Great on both feet. These things do make a difference. Through balls and pace isn't that good this year, I find. But out wide, through balls, to get it to the wingers, if they've got good pace, can make a difference. The cam, I want him to be really good at a lot of things, to be honest. Can go for a slower cam this year, which is nice. Previously, because you had to have fast cams. Garinch is perfect, but you can go for slower cams still. I like to have skill moves. If you're not a skiller, then I think you do hold yourself back a bit. Five-star skills is really nice this year for um, the ball roll scoop and the reverse elastico, flip-flop and elastico. Um, good passing matters here. You can see for my Garincha, uh, where is it? I have gone for a dead eye. You can see there pretty much maxes his passing. On previous FIFAs, I would have gone for a Hunter. But in the cam position this game, passing, because they kind of link the whole front four together, is really important. Out wide, dribbling, pace is still nice. It's not as big, but it still does matter a bit. Skill moves, weak foot, shooting, all the good things you want in attackers. And then for my striker, I really want a big physical striker now. I've put an architect on my CR7. It's not to make him lengthy. I think the reason lengthy strikers are good is because they've got high strength. Lengthy normally means a player has good strength. I don't think lengthy is OP in the sense of it's making players really fast. Check out my uh, why is pace broken on FIFA 23 video. That go that is a 40 minute in depth analysis of lengthy accelerate um, archetypes this year. But I want big physical strikers. CR7 is quick enough even with an architect, and he gets 92 strength so he can bully players. I think players like Kane. Benzema, Lewandowski are perfect still in this striker situation, which is nice to see more options this year. Are you looking to improve at FIFA? Then Underdog Gaming is the place to be. Underdog Gaming is run by me, Zelonius, and Jambu, another FIFA pro, who have been full-time content creators and pro players for the last six years, hitting Elite Division and Top 100 with ease every single year. We've got lots of different tiers catered to what you want, from all the way from entry-level access to a big community discord full of people all looking to improve and get better at the game weekly articles and videos with exclusive tips and guides and tutorials follow backs on twitter where you can dm us uh, and get full access to us coaching sessions gameplay analysis we'll be doing a spreadsheet which will be updated throughout the year with all the op meta players if you want to improve at fifa and you're serious about taking your game to the next level underdog gaming is the place to be you can find the patreon by going to patreon.com slash underdog gaming or check the link that's in the description of this video. I look forward to seeing you guys there. For the striker, stay central, stay forward. He wants to be the focal point of the team. For the cam, get him back on uh, defense, get into the box. You could put him on balance, but I like getting the box. Come back on defense, get into the box for all my cams. For Zidane, I leave the CDMs on cover wing. I want them on cover wing because I want them um, to cover the fullbacks or lamb and ram if they get exposed too much. Cut passing lanes, 
Key, you need that this this year. I mean, it's good every year. For Vieira, he is on stay back. He still gets involved a bit, but um, stay back just protects me a little bit more. Stay back on, well, just default my centre back. And then stay back on my full backs, makes you really solid. I would mix up comes for crosses balance, but I just don't think it really does a lot this year. With pace not being too OP, I don't want my keeper to come out and then get lobbed. I don't think it's that often you get one on ones, but I've had it before with sweeper keeper this year. When my keeper comes out when he didn't need to, and then he just gets lobbed. Okay, so that there is the defensive one. What I would switch to in if I'm a goal or two behind, or really just want to take the game to my opponent, is basically just a more aggressive version. 75 depth, up the width a bit more, go direct passing. Um, it's pretty similar, but I just think it's a more aggressive, better tactic to go to when you're behind. Then for the instructions, um, pretty much the same for the most part, to be honest. Not really changed anything here at all. It's just more aggressive, more high depth, direct. For the ultra defensive tactic to see the game out, I'm not going to go too in depth on this. The main focus of this video is the 4 2 3 1. I go 5 1 2 2. Drop back, direct. Um, I, I leave the wing backs on balance and overlap so they can get you out of the press. I have my middle centre mid on stay back. <coughs> the um, outside centre mid on cover wing. Stay central getting behind, stay on one of the strikers, then come back on defense on one striker, just to experiment almost, see if he actually does come back and help a bit. And then for the all-out attack, again, not going to go too in-depth, um, but constant pressure, why would you not all-out attack go constant pressure? 100 depth, long ball forward runs, just to get as fast um, the ball forward as fast as the cannon runs in behind. 4-4-2, four, four, stay central, getting behind, stay on strikers, stay back on one midfielder, so it's just not too all-out. Balanced on um, one of the midfielders, stay forward, get into the box on the wing, uh, the wingers, and then stay back on the fullbacks. You could experiment and go balance that. That is the tactics. Um, we are now going to go in game and show you some of the best goals, build up play, and defensive clips I have got of using the 4 2 3 1 over the last week. Any questions, by the way, with these tactics, any comments, anything you're not sure about, please do let me know in the comments. I'm making an effort. Um, I'm putting like 15, 16 hour work days at the moment. I'm streaming daily over at Twitch, putting two or three YouTube videos out a day. And I'm trying to reply to every comment you guys show up. The love you guys have been showing me lately, the support has been amazing. I really do appreciate it. And if you do comment, I'll always try to reply to it and give you a good detailed answer back. That will be helpful. And like I say, go check out my Twitch, Zalonis92, daily streams over there. Now let's get into the gameplay clips and see why it's so good in game. Okay, for this clip here, we're showing the shape of the 4-2-3-1 and how it is so good at breaking people down. It is amazing on counter-attack as well. One of the big strengths of the 4-2-3-1 is the back four and two CDMs who keep you solid, but then how quickly you can counter-attack. And because of um, the way FIFA is, it's hard to break people down this year. Counter-attacking does work quite well if you can catch people out. Like I said, the 4 2 3 is perfect for it. So here... Got Garincha as the cab. He'll hover around this area of the pitch. And then we've got the Lamb. You can see the Ram down there making big runs. So Nkunku gets into a lot of space. It's very hard for the defender to deal with this because he's got two men against two there. Through ball to Ronaldo. Honestly, the run of Mbappe makes here is amazing. I do find the better players this year with high position do tend to make big, big and good runs. So watch out for that. You're going to get a lot more of that with the top players. And then here, because he hasn't um, really covered this guy here, he probably either should run close to me or be switching to him to cover there. Because he has a, a cross it in. Software's annoyed when it does this. And look at this finish. Lovely little scorpion kick there. And you see here, it's four minutes in game when we start the count attack in our own half. We've just won the ball back. And within basically one in-game minute, we've gone from one end of the pitch to the other. An easy goal. Bit of a cheeky finish to uh, add to it. But beautiful goal. Not really anything our opponent could do. You could see the front four there. All four of them got involved. So beautiful goal. The 4 2 3 one is really good for that. So in this clip here, we are showing, again, the 4 2 3 one the shape of it. The structure of it, you can see the two CDMs here are always really focused around sitting around here. And 
We've got the fullbacks pass it into Vieira and then nice easy through ball down the line. You can see these through balls are regularly on and very good. He's now a bit scared about that run so he's kind of covering it but then he has to go to Nkunku. Ball rolls inside are a very good way to quickly adjust before you make a pass. And now here, the cam doesn't just sit um, on the edge of the box. He's got to get into box. Vape's got to get into box. And Kunku's got to get into box. Mendy's made a run. The opposition has so much to think about that it's hard to mark anything. And it opens up the long range finesse. They're not amazing this year, but they're definitely good enough, especially if you can consistently green them, which I don't think is too hard with finesses, that you are going to have a weapon here to score goals that will be able to help you break people down who are just marking everything in the box. You can see there, he's got to mark these men, so opens up the long range finesse. Nice, easy goal there. Not a lot my opponent could do about that. We'll watch it one more time. Lots of width, lots of options everywhere. Still plenty of men in the middle. Great run by the cab. Takes defender away. The nice, easy goal. Okay, in this clip, I'm going to show you how crazy the press after possession loss is in this formation. I think the press after possession loss is crazy anyway. But the 4 2 3 one, it's really nice because it's not really a risk at all with two CDMs in the back four. But then you have a lamp, a ramp, striker cam to cover all different areas to press together. As you can see, we win the ball back. And then I lose the ball a couple times here, but watch what happens when I lose it. So lose it there. Everyone just starts running this way, starting to press the ball. Get the ball back straight away. Lose it again, straight onto it. Lose it again. He runs straight towards him. I've lost it four or five times there. Bad play by me, but the press after possession loss helps me get it back. And then from here, nice easy goal. And my opponent couldn't really do anything about it. We'll just watch this back again. It's crazy and it's OP. But I definitely think you need to have it on right now. If you don't, you'll put yourself at a big disadvantage. I don't think the con of it, which is leaving yourself a bit more risky, is that uh, or a bit more open, is that big a risk on this game. The stamina barely dreads, so you may as well use it because it's going to get you the ball back a lot of times, which is going to get you three goals. And that is exactly what you want on FIFA 23. Okay, in this clip, we've got another nice goal with build-up. You start to see the attacking patterns that open up in this 4-2-3-1. It all revolves around getting the ball, rotating it with your defence to your CDMs, using runs down the line with the lamb and ram, the cabin striker always being an outlet in the middle, and looking for what the opposition gives you. On FIFA 23 in particular, you can't rely on just doing the exact same thing every time. You have to use your brain a lot more, I think, on this game, which is a good thing, of course. And you have to really look at what the opposition's given you. And a lot of the time, for me, it tends to be that they're giving you a lot more width, which you can expose, and then it makes space in the middle. Width is really important on FIFA, because if you're too narrow, it's too easy and predictable to defend for a good player. Width forces people to come defend you, and then you get space elsewhere. You can see there, nice play with Nkunku. Get it into my Ronaldo. I've got Garincha there, which is a threat. I've got Mbappe there, which is a threat. It means he's isolated with a defender. Quick scoop turn, nice easy finish. Not a lot my opponent could do about that. 4-2-3-1. Has players in every area. You see it had Zidane here as well on the edge. Vieira sitting back to stop counters. It is so well balanced. So good at keeping the ball. And just OP across the board in my opinion. That it was such a good tactic to use right now. Okay for this final clip here. I'm going to show you another crazy press after possession loss. You've seen how this team shapes up in the attack. How it's structured in defence with the two CDMs. You see how it bobs forward. How you can use width how it gets options in the middle. This formation doesn't really have a massive weakness. The biggest weakness, I would say, is the lack of two strikers. But with the Camon getting to box, he kind of covers that, and you have men all over. So we lose the ball here. Watch what happens. We press him like crazy. We're in his face. And we force him into a mistake there. He probably should have passed out there, but there really wasn't much he could have done. And as soon as we get the ball back here, you can see there, Garincha makes a good run. We've got options everywhere. Zidane as the CDM gets forward a bit more. We cover so much ground here. We have so many options. Look there. Could have even threw balled it to Mbappe. He makes a great run. The get into box really does make a difference, I think, this year. And there, opens up another finesse because he's got to mark the other options. Nice, easy goal. We'll watch this back. Press after possession loss kicks in. Win the ball back very cheaply. And now we catch our opponent off guard. Nice, easy goal. There you go. Press after possession loss. One of the reasons it's so good is that you tend to win the ball back very quickly. And if you win the ball back very quickly, your opponent normally gets caught in transition. 
and it leaves them very vulnerable to a quick counter attack which is so good on this year's FIFA. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you guys. Hopefully you've been able to see how good the 4 2 3 one really is, how it can take your game to the next level. I think it's a perfect tactic to be using in weekend league, especially for the first one where we... There's probably going to be new tactics, new formations that we start to see more and more that come across as OP. As I find them, I'll be putting them out on here for you guys. I want to give you guys the best advice possible. I'm going to be probably using this for this weekend. I'll be testing new tactics over the next week or two to try and give you more options, more variety of things to use. But for now, I really think this is a brilliant tactic. It's got a bit of everything. Hopefully this video has helped you guys. Appreciate you watching. Keep it spicy. See you in the next one.